द किंग ऑफ कर्नाटका ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज द कर्नाटका चक्रवर्ती और द सुल्तान ऑफ हिंदू किंग्स इज हाउ चिक देवराजा वडेयर इज डिस्क्राइब एज बट वट वी नो अबाउट चिक देवराजा वडेयर वॉट आर हिज अकम्पलिशमेंट्स एंड हाउ डिड ही कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट इन बिल्डिंग द स्टेट ऑफ कर्नाटका लेट्स फाइंड आउट अबाउट ऑल दैट इन दिस वीडियो before we dive into understanding who chikka devaraja wadiyar is and it's very important for us to understand the other dynasties that were present in karnataka at that time as we all know one of the most prestigious illustrious kingdoms of karnataka is the vijayanagara empire but during its reign at the battle of talikota aliya ramaraya got thoroughly defeated by the bijapur sultanates that led to the collapse of the vijayanagara kingdom once the vijayanagara kingdom collapsed a lot of small feudatory kingdoms that were reporting to the larger vijayanagara kingdom uh, became ambitious and they wanted to claim their own independence and become independent states uh, there were many such empires but uh, some of the most significant empires are the nayaka dynasties there were many nayaka dynasties but the four most important nayaka dynasties are uh, madurai nayakas coming from madurai uh, tanjore nayakas coming from tanjore Naikas of Jinji coming from Jinji and uh, the Keladi Naikas coming from the Shimoga district. Apart from the Naika dynasties, the other strong contenders for the supremacy of southern India are, of course, the Vadaya dynasty, the Empire of Bijapur and Golconda, and the Maratha rulers under the leadership of Shivaji and his brothers Shantaji and Ekoji. India at that time was going through a period of high political instability. The Naikas of Jinji, Madurai, Keladi, and uh, Tanjore were fighting amongst themselves for the supremacy over southern India. The empires of Bijapur and Golconda were trying to survive against the onslaught of the Mughal emperor Aurangzeb. Amidst all of this, southern India was an open playing field for any of the dynasties present at that time. The political climate in southern India was so volatile that each passing day brought a new equation, a new ruler and a new supreme. but if we have to narrow it down to two dynasties that came face to face with each other making us ignore the other dynasties present at that time were uh, the wadaiyar dynasty headed by chikka devaraja wadaiyar and the maratha rulers under the leadership of shivaji ekoji and shantaji now let us understand a little bit more about chikka devaraja wadaiyar chikka devaraja wadaiyar was a visionary and he was an ambitious ruler on his part he was trying to consolidate the mysorean territories while expanding it just two years uh, after his coronation as a king he kept a lot of enemies at a distance from the mysorean territories and he also successfully conquered vast tracts of land in the bijapur balaghat region shivaji another great ruler immediately after his coronation he also went on a military expedition to conquer a vast tracts of land on his way back to southern india he landed at the shrirangapatna and conquered uh, bangalore hoskote and dodbalapura i now shocked by the surprise attack of shivaji and him conquering the parts of mysorean territories which are bangalore hoskote and dodbalapura chika devaraja wadiyar was not a man who will sit tight he also was having an ambition to go on another military expedition and conquer these lands and also much more than that so he also set out on a military expedition in 1678 in this expedition chikadev raja wadiyar first goes to andur from andur he goes to erod from erod he goes to chikkakuratagere in tumkur district of karnataka after capturing chikkakuratagere he comes down to magadi to conquer it from magadi he marches further up to conquer madagiri from madagiri he comes to kadur and finally from kadur he goes to hosur to capture it at hosur he met the maratha forces headed by ekoji under the leadership of his prime minister yashwantra Yashwantrav was dealt with a crushing blow and in the characteristic Mysorean style he lost nose as well many more acquisition followed after that by Chikka Devaraja Wadiyar he even conquered Shira which was until then the ancestral property of Shivaji so Chikka Devaraja Wadiyar laid his hand directly on the ancestral property of Shivaji after these many acquisitions and successes Chikka Devaraja Wadiyar earned the title of 
emperor of the south and karnataka state and also the sultan of hindu kings luckily for chikatevaraja wadiyar a uh, great warrior shivaji breathed his last which weakened the maratha army but did not stop them from attacking on the mysorean territories again one such attack was done on shrirangapatna when the uh, army at shrirangapatna was deployed elsewhere marathas took note of it and landed at the gates of shrirangapatna chikadevaraja wadiyar was a very shrewd and an intelligent ruler he understood the strategy behind the attack of the marathas and he came up with his own master plan to attack the marathas in a way that they did not see it coming when the maratha rulers were sleeping at the kalasagire and kotati regions chikadev raja sent a small portion of his army along with 3000 cattle that were let loose from the shed at the middle of the night with torch lamps tied to their horns now maratha rulers who were sleeping were woken up by this sea of lights that were approaching towards them and they were caught completely off guard this 3000 cattle acted like wild beasts that completely routed the maratha forces with all the general skilled a large sum of money and military equipments were confiscated from them this also earned chikadevaraja wadiyar the title of karnataka chakravarti as he was one of the most powerful kings of his times in the next episode let's talk about how chikadevaraja wadiyar very smartly bought bangalore for rupees 3 lakhs from the maratha rulers and what was the importance of bangalore in all these political situations if you have not subscribed to my channel i kindly request you to click on the subscribe button and subscribe immediately thank you thank you for watching